Hi everyone, it's Henry here. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through how I would go about painting up an army of one of our favorite Space Marine chapters, the Red Scorpions. Now these guys featured very heavily and frequently in most of the Forge World campaign books that they used to do. Uh, things like the Anfalian Project, and the Badab Wars, uh, in fact, most of them. And there were certain characters where we'd see their careers progress um, as they went through these various campaigns. So for those of us that were particularly into Forge World uh, at the time, these guys were almost like the poster boys uh, for the Loyalist Marines, kind of like how the Ultramarines are often seen as the poster boys of the Loyalist Marines in sort of normal, for want of a better term, 40k. And I've been wanting to do this video for low, for ages, to be honest, um, so is Andy. But when the Leviathan box came out, Games Workshop sent us through uh, a copy to review, the Assault Cannon model was just screaming to be to be done. There's this really wonderful piece of artwork by Karl Kapinski um, that we've really loved, and I thought it was too good an opportunity not to do a little paint job inspired by that, but also look at how we can get an army of these guys on the table looking great, both in the hand and at three foot, in a reasonable amount of time to less paint. I did a few little changes to the base model other than using the assault cannon arms on a different body from the kit. It's very easy to, to interchange the arms. I suppose the major change was I put a Tartaros Terminator chain fist uh, onto the power fist uh, of this model just so it echoed that artwork a little bit more closely. With regards to sub-assemblies, I've left the head separate and the arm separate. The left arm doesn't actually need to be separate at all, um, but the, le uh, the right arm and the head are going to be different colours to the rest of the armour. So because it's so easy, it makes sense for us to separate them out into different bits. And I've just primed the model black. Um, you just use whatever primer. Uh, you like really doesn't matter for this scheme. Now the order I've done things in color wise uh, is relatively important. I don't know about important. I've done it for a reason anyway to try and be as efficient as possible so I'm not sort of taking the same color out doing something with it and then not doing something for a while and then going back to it just to try and keep in that sort of army painting mindset. And I'm using reddish gray by AK. I've thinned this about two drops of thinner to one drop of paint. Uh, and I'm spraying it about 25 psi in a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle airbrush. This is our signature series uh, Infinity by Harder and Steenbeck I'm using. And I'm base coating everything I'm going to do white, but also everything that I'm going to do uh, yellow. And then for the helmet, which is going to be white, I'm just highlighting it with Tamiya flat white. Thinned about three drops of Tamiya thinner to one drop of the Tamiya paint. I'm using normal airbrush thinner for all the other paints for this. And then when I've still got the flat white in the airbrush, I'm going to do a little, very simple pre-shade uh, in preparation for the yellow here. It's not essential, but it always helps. Um, so here I'm just sort of using the white to create the areas of light and leaving that reddish grey where I think it would be dark. Now for the yellow itself, I've done a 50-50 mix of uh, Zandri dust and Nasdrake yellow contrast paint. Um, two reasons really. One, to create this kind of dull yellow but also there's going to be times where I want to brush paint the yellow onto the model rather than airbrush it so I wanted something that I could get a very very similar look with with the brush or the airbrush and the color of the Nasdrake yellow is great but also the properties of the Zandri dust a little bit thicker paint um, really helps us when it comes to that a few layers of that on there again thinned probably two to one thinner to the mixture we're good to go then the whole thing gets a gloss varnish and this is because I'm about to cover it in masking fluid or liquid mask. Now I'm choosing to use a humbrol here but most brands will do a liquid latex mask. Uh, you can apply it with a cocktail stick which is what I'd suggest. I didn't have one to hand so I just used a paper clip instead. And this is a really effective way of masking off kind of irregular shapes that you might find tricky using tape uh, or putty to get a really clean mask with because I want to paint the rest of his arm and his hand here grey the, the same as the rest of the armour is going to be. Now, speaking of the rest of the armor, uh, the gray is quite important, I think, or it is for me anyway with these red scorpions. You know, gray and yellow, it's a space wolf scheme, so we want to differentiate that perhaps from how we would do, you know, our own space wolf army. So we want to look a little bit different. And for me, I wanted to get that sort of dirty, almost brown gray uh, look. So for a base coat, I've used a Skaven Blight Dinge. It's painted by Games Workshop. Thinned 
maybe slightly more than 50-50, so one-to-one with thinner and paint. I give you these ratios as a, as a guide. Um, it's going to change whatever your setup is, whatever the situation is that you spray, and you're, you're going to probably need to adjust it um, you know, to, to, to work best for you. But these are the ones that I'm working with uh, over here in the UK um, currently. Now for the highlight, I've chosen to use AK Reddish Grey. I'm not a huge fan of the AK paints through the airbrush. I find they take a little bit more work to get them usable. Um, I've tried using AK's own thinner, that didn't seem to make much difference. So generally I will add whatever airbrush thinner I'm using and then I'll usually add a drop of flow improver into that as well. And that seems to get things moving through you know, fairly well. Um, but I really, really like this color so it was worth persevering with to get it just right. And I'm applying fairly simple uh, highlights here uh, where I think the light source is coming from the front left uh, as we're looking at this miniature because of the way his pose is. Um, but it's nothing too extreme. We're not really showing off uh, any sort of um, particularly clever modulation or, or rendering uh, on the model here. We're just going for a lighter grey, the right colour, mid-tone bright grey with that Scaven Blight Dinge. Uh, and then for the shadows, I'm going to use a contrast paint called Rattling Grime. And I've thinned this, again, about 50-50, maybe slightly more thinner. Um, than contrast paint and I'm just applying this into the shadows again just to bring in a little bit more of that brown uh, tones to the grey. I did a few testers for this scheme as I as I often do uh, for these videos really really happy um, with the colours that I achieved on this one um, and I say there's a bit of kind of a bit of pressure on it because I say it's one of mine and Andy's uh, favourite looking chapters. So I guess this gets to go into the Badab playlist as well, uh, even though a sort of Leviathan was the inspiration for it, because they got a lot of history uh, with the Tyranids, the, um, the Red Scorpions. Now speaking of that mixture that we used earlier, the Nasdrag and Zandri Dust, uh, this is me painting it straight onto the knee to echo that little bit of artwork, and I don't know how many layers it took, probably five or six, something like that. Um, just put the mixture on my palette, and it, it covered brilliantly. Uh, it gave me a nice opaque uh, finish and was so easy to do. And if you've been in the hobby for any length of time, um, you'll remember when yellow used to be really problematic uh, to get to paint. Um, now there's there's so many great paints out there we can use. It's, uh, it's really opened up sort of the ease of doing some of those schemes that were perhaps perceived as being more difficult in the past. Uh, now time to peel off that liquid mask. Uh, I've used... Blue tack and some tweezers here. Blue tack wherever I can, um, just to avoid scratching anything. Um, but sometimes you've got to get in there and really winkle it out. Then put it back together and given the whole model a good few coats of gloss varnish. Now I'm using polyurethane gloss varnish here through my airbrush. Still spraying 25 psi, and I've thinned it as much as I needed to thin it to get it to go through. Probably did four or five coats. Um, but you again, you're going to need to change that depending on what gloss varnish you want to use. Now, I really enjoy using enamel washes. I have done, as you can see by the state of this bottle, I have done for a very long time. And this was a, felt like a really good opportunity to have a play around with them again, because I haven't for a while. The enamel washes you, uh, are going to be called different things by different companies. But try to kind of ignore the name and just look at what the colours are. Um, because that's, particularly when we're using them for things like Whammer, um, we're not necessarily concerned with with what well, we can't be concerned with historical accuracy can we because it doesn't exist um, but you, you know what I'm getting at with it it's more about what is the color right um, so for this I wanted a, a really dark gray to use as a pin wash uh, or a panel line um, the gray armor so I've used panel liner for gray and blue it's probably a good starting point uh, and I've thinned it with a little bit of white spirits there now you can see I took my time adding a couple of drops at a time because we don't want to over thin it if we do it's going to separate out uh, and not look right but if we don't thin it enough then it's not going to flow nicely uh, into all of those recesses in spite of the fact that we've applied that gloss varnish that we've lowered that surface tension um, i've done a whole video on recess washing that i'll, I'll link up in the corner um, using enamels using oils using acrylics um, and hopefully can help you out if you're, you're having any issues um, with that but if you are struggling with things like pin washing let me know in the comments um, and i will look at potentially doing a video where we we explore it again but I'm just working my way around all the armour here and touching the brush wicks the paint off the model. 
this brush is awful that should have been binned you need you need one with a slightly better point um, than that for the white on the scheme i have used uh, another panel liner by ak but again the reason i've chosen this is because it's a sort of lighter green brown color um, I, the dark gray that we just used on the gray was too strong for me um, when i tried it uh, in the testers and i much preferred this a little bit a little bit softer you can see when it dries, and it takes a little while to dry, maybe half an hour, an hour um, till it's dry, you can see it almost looks lighter in areas. Um, enamel wash dries very, very matte in most cases, um, almost dusty finish, and that can almost make it look lighter uh, in the recesses. Don't worry about that. We're going to address that by varnishing the model uh, and sort of unifying that finish. And once your armour and the recess has got the same uh, finish to it, the, rather than the armour being really glossy and therefore looking darker than the recesses that were very, very matte, you'll unify it together and you'll get that effect that you're after, uh, where you've, in this case anyway, we wanted the recesses to be darker. So that was a satin varnish I was giving the model there. Now chipping, one of my absolute favourite parts of painting. Uh, Marines are, are great fun for it and a nice big awesome Terminator like this is really good fun uh, to play around with and I've left a lot more footage in uh, this chipping. I've done slightly more than I would perhaps um, when we've been painting quicker army schemes recently but personally I feel when you have something like Marines it's going to be a relatively low model count army so I think you can afford to take a bit more time on certain stages and as I say this is army painting it's not speed painting um, you know this is this is the kind of techniques I'd be putting in, in my own army where I'd be hoping to get nominated for best army um, I'd want it to look cool on the table but I would want it to be interesting for someone if they picked it up and looked at it you know closer now initially we've used some sponge there just to introduce a few sort of random chips and I've just used reddish grey. I haven't lightened it up at all. When we apply it with a brush or a sponge, it will look lighter or more intense than it would have done with the airbrush um, because it's more opaque. Um, and now I'm going in with my brush and I'm applying more chips, but I'm also applying scratches here as well in the artwork um, from that. Uh, Amphalium project one they've got an awful lot of these big scratches over them I'm guessing where they've been you know getting beaten up by the Tyranids and I thought it was a really cool uh, look I don't want my Red Scorpion to be all corroded and super grimy but I do want him to look very battle worn like he's in the middle of it all so I'm going to have plenty of scratches uh, I'm going to have a little bit of dirt and grime later but I'm not going to go with too much corrosion or anything on him and you see I'm just going around pretty much every single edge applying some form of chipping and it behaves a little bit like an edge highlight uh, in that it defines uh, the armour panels better or more clearly but you don't have to be as sharp and as accurate as you would with a traditional edge highlight that's not to say you don't take your time uh, and you'd be very deliberate with how you're applying it you see where we've got some of those areas where the sponge has given us a few random dots just gone in and added a few more with the brush, maybe connected a few of them to create some larger chips. And I'm paying attention to which parts of the uh, Terminator I think would receive sort of the most damage, um, particularly things like the fists, shoulder pads, uh, the lower half of him. And for the yellow, I do exactly the same. Uh, I've just mixed in a little bit of ice yellow um, by Vallejo Model Color into that 50-50 uh, mix that we sprayed on earlier to create a much, much lighter uh, color and chipped away there. Once you're happy with where all of those chips are, and don't feel that you can't go back because you, you absolutely can. Uh, I've gone in with a darker color. In this case, I'm using uh, Dark Rust by Vallejo uh, Panzer Aces, but any sort of dark brown will work absolutely fine here. Uh, I'm saying that because my pot is really, really old and I haven't even checked to see if they still do this color. Um, I hope they do because I could do with a new one, um, but you know, a dark red brown is what I've chosen here. And I'm just going to do a few little dots uh, with this, mainly over areas I've already done 
some of the lighter scratches uh, but I might do them in in their own areas as well again I want to be quite sparing with this because I don't want that corroded look to them um, you know this isn't just slap a load of brown wash over it and, and call it weathered um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to in my mind I'm, I'm trying to tell more of, of a story with that there's anything wrong with you know dunking it in that um, it's just I find this a more enjoyable way of painting as you can see it really starts to bring the model uh, to life and it's probably the most time consuming part of the process but for me it's very very enjoyable and it's only you know five ten minutes you know a, a model it's not a huge amount of time you know i would expect to be able to chip a whole squad of terminators in a in a evening's hobby session i've done uh, some areas of the armor black wherever i could because black is sort of the tertiary ish color uh, on the scorpions and there's because of the way the shoulder pads work on the terminators and whatnot there's not a huge amount of it so i decided to use it um, more on the assault cannon just so we could sort of take a look and make sure it's added in there and very very simple um, i just painted it with vallejo model color black and then i've just chipped it uh, using a gray and i just mixed in um, a bit of the reddish gray and the black until i had a lighter gray uh, and and this is what i ended up with for the crux terminatus and i don't know what the knee pad one is i have to check that out because it looks a lot like the crux on his shoulder um, but i'm not sure whether it's just more of a a veteran symbol or whatever i have to have a look in, uh, in one of the books um, i'm base coating that using us olive drab so sort of a brown dark brown green color and then all i do to highlight it is mix in uh, zandri dust and just keep mixing in and getting lighter and lighter and just doing lots and lots of little taps and scratches uh, to highlight it up the final thing i want to do to change the color of the armor is to give it a filter for this i'm using one of my favorite uh, oil paints this is burnt umber by winsor and newton and this is their artist's oil color uh, range the reason i'm using this is because i want a very very thin uh, wash very very dilute mix to put over the model and i've found with a lot of other brands uh, particularly that abtolung stuff but also some of the other winsor newton brands things like the winton brand they do the cheaper version when you thin it right the way down it tends to separate um, and it, you don't get the effect that you want whereas a better quality oil i have found you're, you're able to thin it down it still maintains its sort of integrity as it were with with the, the pigment and everything so i thinned it down as you see there in the dish with mineral spirits to very very dilute consistency now i'm going to brush that over the model now i'm not just slapping it on i don't particularly want it to run into the recesses here i'm slowly drawing the brush across all of the surfaces and leaving a very very thin film of this brown oil over them all so hence filtering the color that's underneath it now i might go back in later and add a bit more uh, a bit more concentrated um, brown wash into some of the recesses for dirt and stuff but that's not the aim of this stage and you can see i think is a total transformation really of of the armor color absolutely love it i was really excited at this point um so yeah <laughs> it's always nice when that happens uh with a paint job now i find when i'm army painting that i have to accept that certain parts of the model probably aren't going to get as much love as other parts and for me uh, an area where we can save quite a lot of time are the metals so I've given the silvers on this uh, a simple uh, couple of coats of burnt iron, which is just a sort of dingy uh, silver color, uh, something like Iron Warriors by Games Workshop, very similar. And then I've used Necro Gold um, for the gold parts. And then I'm going to give those an enamel wash uh, as well. Now this is enamel wash for brown and green. So you can see it's a much darker brown color than we put on the uh, white. And this I'm going to wash over probably a couple of, I think I did it twice in the end. So one, let it dry, then did another. Uh, we don't need to treat the paint underneath with anything just as long as it's dry you can wash straight over the top of it for the lenses uh, i wanted to do something fairly simple uh, but also quite quite bright um, and just a little bit different to how i how i normally um, so i've base coated them with corn red and then i'm just going to add evil sun scarlet towards the center of that lens then i'll take a little bit of vallejo model color ice yellow so that color that i mixed in earlier if you remember to the yellow for the chipping uh, and i'm going to keep building that up towards the center of the eye to get that bright 
uh, center. And then I just give it a couple of very sort of light uh, washes over with the Nasdreg yellow just to make it that bit more orangey. Um, and I, I really, really love sort of how that's how that's come out on it. And you can see how quickly now all of a sudden it's done. We've spent 80% of the time, probably more, on the armor and actually getting the other little bits and details done nice and simply. I don't think it detracts from it uh, whatsoever. I did the decals incidentally at the same stage uh, as I did the um, pin washing with the enamels earlier. I should have mentioned that. Now a lot of the time you could just leave it here and be done but I want to go in and just elevate it slightly so I've gone back in with a lighter gold colour, back in with a lighter silver colour, I've gone back in with that grey, uh, light grey chipping mixture and just added a few little tiny little dot highlights here and there um, just to freshen it up a little bit because um, that, that oil filter is great and everything and the enamels are cool but they do dull everything uh, right the way down. And then as a last stage, I'm going to do a few oil, uh, oil streaks. It's one of my favorite things. Again, uh, you do it to your taste. Um, I'll link up to the video um, dedicated to sort of doing streaks. Um, but I've just taken here a sort of grungy green brown color. I think it was Industrial Earth by Abtalung. And I've taken uh, Shadow Brown by Abtalung 502 as well. Um, but a brown and a, and a greeny brown. And then I'm just going to apply those to some of the scratches, some of the damage we've done, and pull those streaks down uh, using a a brush that's wet with mineral spirits but as I say you put as much or as little of this as you like you know to your taste for your model um, I certainly think it can be overdone for some but also uh, it can look incredible when you do loads of it as well um, so yeah have, have some fun with it and if you don't like how it goes you can always just wipe it off with a bit of white spirits uh, anyway but I think it's a nice sort of final touch uh, for the model And I've just picked a few obvious areas, um, like the shoulder pad where we've got that lovely uh, white decal. Uh, incidentally, the decals I got from um, Mighty Brush, I don't think they do them anymore. Forge World used to do a sheet, so you can ask around your hobby group, someone might have it. But to be honest, there's so many custom um, decal places now that if you give it a Google, I'm sure someone's got um, producing something very, very similar uh, that you can use. Uh, if you want to create your own Red Scorpions army. Uh, for the base, I'll pop down the pigments I used in the description, um, but it's I think it was Metal Slag and Light Sienna. Two, two pigments, nice and simple, like we do most of the bases here uh, on the YouTube channel. But yeah, it, it always amazes me, and I, I say it quite often, how, how quickly the model comes together towards the end. Um, it can feel like a bit of a slog when you're doing the armour. I don't find it a slog because I really enjoy it doing that painting um, but it is the vast majority of the time is going to be spent on it but particularly with something like a space marine or an Eldar model or a tower model it's all about the armor really that's that's what identifies them as the chapter you know it, it, it's worth getting it right um, and for once I feel like I did get it just right with this guy I, I, I look at that piece of artwork and you know, one of my favorite pieces and I'm really happy um, with what we've what we've come up with here uh, in the end if you do go away and have a go at this scheme i would love for you to tag me or, or mention us in in a post on, on socials about it i love seeing these schemes translated across to squads and armies um it's been amazing seeing how many of you have been jumping on that speed painting uh, speed painted tyranid scheme we did recently um it's wicked to see like a bunch of that sort of leviathan, leviathan half of the box um painted up uh, in ken's scheme um so yeah keep going we, we really really do enjoy um seeing it so if you've got any questions at all, um, pop them down in the comments. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, then likes and subscribes make a huge difference. But a massive thank you to all of you that support us over on Patreon um, that allow us to produce tutorials over there each week and then tutorials over here as well. Uh, myself and Andy are incredibly grateful. Uh, we've got tons of cool stuff. Uh, coming up for you so if there's any chapters you'd like me to take a look at in a few weeks time maybe next month time for you know have a break from marines for a little bit you never know um then let me know in the comments uh, i'm really feeling these terminators they're so much fun to do um to do the different recipes on as well so let me know and i'll get to them as soon as i can hit the like button if you've enjoyed it subscribe if you're not already and i'll see you next time if you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself, but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done, consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out.